The theme of this TED series is decoding the language of climate. I study the ocean, and to me, the language of the ocean is through the data that we collect. A hundred years ago, we needed to collect a single sample of water in order to be able to get a word of that language. Fifty years later, we could construct sentences of this language through the development of sensors that could provide strings of numbers that would allow continuous monitoring. Now we're in an environment where we can collect paragraphs of information, huge data sets, particularly through the development of technology surrounding acoustic measurements and imaging tools. I study a part of the carbon cycle called the biological carbon pump, but you might be more familiar with what we call the inorganic pump, the process by which CO2 in the atmosphere is dissolved at the sea surface and then through mixing processes and subduction, it's folded into the deep ocean. This balance, this, this exchange of carbon through a biological form and then remineralization back into an inorganic form in the deep ocean is very similar to the cycle that occurs in our forests every year. So in the fall, trees drop their leaves, those leaves accumulate on the floor and then are remineralized by bacteria and broken down back into an inorganic form that can eventually be used by the tree the following spring during the next bloom. Our oceans are very similar to this in that they have phytoplankton that are fixing that carbon through photosynthesis. Some of that material is packaged and reprocessed into detrital particles that then sink out from the surface into the deep sea. On the way down, most of that material is remineralized by bacteria and converted back into an inorganic CO2 form. A tiny fraction of it actually does reach the seafloor, and this is actually what eventually becomes our fossil fuels over millions of years. What my lab has developed is an imaging tool for monitoring what we call the biological carbon pump. This technology derives from technology that's actually been in existence for over 50 years. An autonomous instrumented package that can be deployed off of a research vessel. It's pre-ballasted so that we've added just the right amount of weight so that it can sink down and hit an intermediate level in the ocean, somewhere inside what we call the twilight zone, the region below the sunlit surface and the abyss. These instruments are deployed for periods of days to weeks and eventually maybe even years. They have sensors on board that allow us to monitor the temperature, the salinity, the oxygen concentration and changes in oxygen, and also take photographs of what we call marine snow. The way that they do this is by drifting in a water following frame that allows the snow particles that are falling down from being produced by phytoplankton above and they land on an imaging surface that's upward facing and provide us with a time-lapse view of the accumulation of these particles. At the end of the mission, the minion will drop its weight and then flip over and come back up to the surface. On the other side, on its head, is the tools that we use to be able to transmit the data through satellites back to the ship or to shore. The reason why I'm building tools to be able to monitor the biological carbon pump is because we don't yet understand how this very complex process that constitutes a huge quantity of this carbon exchange will change under a changing ocean and a changing climate. A hundred years ago, we needed to collect a single sample of water in order to get one word of the ocean's language. Imagine with me now a future where the ocean is filled with thousands of robots, my minions among them, that are collecting vast data sets that will allow us to fill books and libraries with the ocean's stories.